So I'm always an advocate of helping people out and promoting products and services that I believe in. And today we're going to introduce you guys this amazing product and service that is helping athletes with their branding. Now with the name, image, and likeness situation being a thing now, right? And in, in athletics, especially for the college scene, and it's trickling down into the high school world, branding, reputation, it's so important. And today I'm talking to the CEO and founder of Athlete Narrative, which is an app that's going to be providing you guys with so much value for the athlete for a very affordable cost. And I want to share this with you because I believe in this product. I believe in the service and uh, I want to be able to get you guys a discount on the product and service. So I want you guys to tune in and listen, take notes of what they are providing with athlete narrative. And then you're going to be absolutely shocked at the overall cost of this product uh, for what they're providing for the athletes. We're also going to be talking about not only the branding during their athletic career, and their exposure during the athletic career, but how athlete narrative is going to help them transition when sport is over, right? When they're done competing in their sport, what is the next steps? That's what this app is for. That's the North star of their service is they're trying to build the foundation and build the reputation and build a brand for this person, this athlete, and then help them transition when the sport is completed. Such an amazing interview, very insightful, and I know that all the coaches, the parents, the players need to, to, to tune in, pay attention, take notes of this one, because this is the Game Time Guru. So, what time is it? Game Time Boost! This is the Game Time Guru podcast, where I interview sports figures from all over the world to help deliver a panoramic view on sports. So whether you're a former athlete, one of the crazies, or simply a casual sports fan, this is the perfect show for you as we peel back the curtains and learn from our guests every single week. I'm your host, Shane Larson, and I'm helping you see sports through a different lens. What's up, everybody? Welcome out to another episode of the Game Time Guru Podcast. My name is Shane Larson, host of the show. Uh, again, this is now going into year eight of the podcast. We started this in 2017. We've completed seven years of the show. So grateful for all of you who have tuned in listened to the show, shared the show. Anybody who's been a guest on the show, I just want to say thank you. There's a reason we're now having downloads in 182 countries, all 50 states. All thanks to everybody that has tuned in. Um, it's It's been a village that has helped grow this whole entire thing, and I appreciate everybody who's supported. So again, if, there's, if you're listening to this, you're like, hey, how can I support Shane? Even if it's not from a financial standpoint, all I ask is for a review. Leave me a review on Apple Podcasts. If you're, if you're watching this on YouTube, if you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, whatever, leave me a review. That's the kicker. That's the caveat. That's the cool little algorithm secret, I guess you could call it, for podcasts. You leave a review, it gets it out to more people. It's been that way forever. People just don't like to say that. So I'm just going to share that with you guys. Leave me a review. It helps a ton. And uh, we'll keep getting this thing out to more and more people. As you guys heard in the introduction, super special episode for me today. I'm talking to a friend of mine that I actually know here locally. I'll call him a friend now. Uh, I knew him from the local gym and everything. And it's just kind of funny how you know things just... I, I I was interested in this this product and service that was being provided. I had no idea that he was the founder and CEO of this product and service and uh, happened to get in contact with him. And now I have him on the podcast to dis discuss this. And um, it's a product and a service that I'm going to be pushing out there and promoting for all the athletes that I've been in contact with. And uh, I think this is very important for all the athletes, the parents, and the coaches that are out there. So if this is you, strap up. We're getting ready for this one. So get your notepads out on your devices and we'll take some notes. Joining me today is Brian Fulmer. Brian, thanks for joining the show, man. Absolutely, that was a that that was a heck of a rollout on how. Wait, that's a long way of saying this is a dope show. So it's an honor for me to be on here. Um, and yes, you can call me a friend because that was a step brothers moment when you and I were talking on the phone and we started making all the connections and we just went, did we just become best friends? Yup. So yeah, absolutely. You you can call me you can call me a buddy. Hey, I like that. I like that. I'm I'm digging the connection. It is funny how small the world is for those who are listening. Brian and I, like we run in similar circles, but we've never really fully crossed paths until like just recently. So it's kind of cool. Right. Um, right. So Brian, I, I, I talk to athletes all the time. I talk mm -hmm. to athletes, coaches, parents, everybody in the sports space. And I've done media for the high school athletic scene. I coach basketball at the club scene for Idaho Premier. So I'm around athletes all the time. And one of the things I'm very passionate about is like how they brand themselves, how they take care of themselves and have like a social branding just making sure that they're not being stupid but also not just not being stupid but very, being very intelligent in the sense yeah. of like you got to utilize it too, like leverage this opportunity as well what you guys have at athlete narrative is 
actually helping that exact sphere of what I'm talking about. And I want to talk about Athlete Narrative. First and foremost, you're a business guy. What got you even in the mindset of seeing this opportunity of, of creating a platform? We'll get into more of what the platform is about. What even got you in that mindset of saying, hey, I want to take on this business venture and, and do this? Yeah. So, I mean, I'll give a real brief history. Um, I am one of the proud card carrying members of a college dropout. Very happy, very happy to talk about that. Uh, we, but that's, that's a separate topic. So I started in the, in the banking and financing world, um, 17 and a half years ago. And I have been nose to the grind on that, um, for the last 17 and a half years, built up a huge book of business, ran multiple branches, became a VP at a, at a publicly traded bank, all, all, all great things. I got brought this idea uh, by one of the other founders, and it was a little acorn of an idea, but his son is a professional soccer player. Um, and he was witnessing other kids being taken into academies and getting better contracts, not because they're better players, but because of the hype that they had online, that, they're, that, that those families had went and literally hired PR firms to hype up these kids. And, and for those of you that don't follow soccer, they're literal kids. Like they're literally like 14, 15 year old kids that get taken into these academies. So that's what his son is. His son's a, a 14, 15 year old, absolute phenom soccer player. So he's over in Spain and he's watching his son try out for a national team over in Spain. And he can't do anything because he's there for two weeks. So he just starts researching this and he starts coming across other people and they all tell him the same thing. My son's here. He's not as good as your son. It's because of the hype we've created online. And they started going down this rabbit hole. So he started kind of going like all a cart mode on how he could do this. And then he came back to me and my brother um, initially and said, guys, here, here's a thought I have. Um, I'm not a business guy he, speaking on, <clears throat> on his behalf. And he said, how do we do this? And then quickly, my brother, um, who's one of the other founders, started to scale it. Then they brought me in to run it because um, of my history in running it. And we took that acorn of an idea and just started compounding and just started throwing everything that we could at it and saying, hey, I think we can literally change the game for branding for student athletes. And that's what the product is. Ooh, it's cool to hear the background of that. It's cool how like guys that have uh, guys and girls that have similar ideas, but they're in different. They know mm -hmm. what everyone's strengths are, but they have different experiences um, in the the world. And they bring people in, and what you're able to create when you have like powerful minds together, which is obviously what you guys are doing. Correct. You know, Correct. everybody's got some strengths there. I'm a big fan of just entrepreneurship and business in general, and I think that's awesome. So, with the branding component, how are you guys changing the game? I know that there's a lot of people out there trying to do their best. There's a lot of athletes, Brian, that I, that even I have coached that are getting more active on social media. They're trying to be more active, but they don't really know what to post, but they're doing a right. better job to try to get their name out there. Cause they know like that's exactly what you said. If they don't have their name out there, there's a hundred thousand other choices that, that people are going to see. So you've got right. to make noise in some capacity. You've got to make noise, but just don't be an idiot. But how are you guys sticking out? How are you guys changing the game? So one, one of the first things that an athlete does when they come on with us is we put them through what we call a narrative assessment test. That's why it's called athlete narrative. Okay. Um, think of it like a personality test, but it's specifically for athletes. We're going to put them through our proprietary test. It's going to ask them a whole bunch of questions like <clears throat> how they react on a field, how they react off the field, how they perceive problems, how they want their coach to perceive them. And then we're going to spit out to them a type, an archetype. We've, we've identified and created 10 separate archetypes that exist in sports. And those type of archetypes is the narrative that we're going to tell on an every single day basis. And a lot of people will hear that and be like, okay, cool. You've kind of identified my personality. Yes, but here's where we take it further. We provide you with a curated post every single day that's personal to you that has that through line of the narrative that you established. So let's say you took the test and you test it out as in one of the narratives as an underdog hero that you grind, but you're always kind of coming from behind on stuff. You're always that underdog. Great. We're going to curate posts that are personal to you, hand delivered to you through our app that have that through line in it. Because what the algorithm loves is consistency. Just like any aspect in business, sports, anything, it's just simply about showing up every single day. And that's where these athletes struggle is they'll do it once and then they focus on their, their actual sport. And it's tasking for them to have to think like, what do I actually post here? We take all of that out of it. We have an app that speaks to every single social media outlet they tie to it. They log into the app. They see the posts that we've provided to them. They can edit it a little bit if they want. They follow whatever prompt if we're like, hey, grab a picture from your camera roll. And all they do is hit approve. And when the, once they hit approve in our app, 
it posts to every single social media outlet that they have tied to it. So they don't have to go and like repost to X or repost uh, to Instagram or anything it ju- or TikTok. It does it for them. So for them, it, it plays exactly to what athletes do, which is athletes like to follow instruction. We all like freedom, but we want instruction. We want the play called for us. That's what we do. We're calling the play for them. They put their own twist on it. They hit approve and they go about their day. It takes two seconds. Wow. Okay. And I love that you touched base on consistency. I think that's a big factor for content creation in general, but especially for athletes. So I've got, I've got athletes that I coach in, in the basketball world that, I mean, they're trying to snip up their own highlights, right? So they're trying to put a highlight reels out there for themselves. And here's my sure. stats for the last couple of days. But then that takes a lot of time for mm-hmm. them. And so the, I mean, that one post, it took them a week to put it out there because they had to clip up all the, the, the footage. And then by that time, there's been six, seven days that have gone by. They haven't made another post because it just takes so much time. I'm curious. Do you guys do videos too, Brian? Or is it mainly just, okay. Nope, so nope, we videos do. as well? Yep. So so at, at the base level model that we have, we provide a once a month highlight reel. So we have a repository inside of the app where they can literally just drop footage. Just drop it in there. And we encourage them, just drop it in there. And we'll hand deliver back to them uh, once a month at the base level, a highlight reel. Um, that's with music edited, everything like that. We have higher levels where we, if they want con, they want video content highlight like that, then we're doing it every single day for them. But at that base level, we provide, we call it a sizzle reel. We'll give them one sizzle reel every single month. Um, and they just drop the highlights into the app. It's super simple. So they can be five second. They don't need to do any of the editing, just drop all those in there and we'll take care of them for them. Wow. That's huge. So I want everybody to take note of that. Again, I always encourage the listeners, the podcast, if you hear something that you like, pause it, rewind it, take out your device. If you got an iPhone, Android, whatever it is, just take your notepad out and type that down. Like if you're on a treadmill, whatever you're doing, type this stuff down. That's important right there. That's a huge piece to this entire this entire thing. So talk to us about this, Brian. Like there's a huge like shift in the in the the college athletic scene. It's trickling down into a lot of states for the the mm-hmm. high school athletic scene for name, image, and likeness. Now that since 2021 in July, they approved that. So, you know, athletes, student athletes can get paid for their name, image, and likeness. So their branding is even more important. It's not just important for recruiting. It's important for their Correct. livelihood. If you really want to be that, that I get to that point. Um, talk to us about that. Are you connected with any of the NIL Absolutely. markets and how does that yep. work that way for them? Yep. So that's actually, that's actually our biggest play. And we want to always make sure, help people understand that. Look, there's a lot of really, really great recruiting platforms. We are not exclusively a recruiting platform. What we will do is we'll get more eyeballs on your kid. Okay. But what we are really, really good at and what we're actually created for is exactly what you said, that dirty little word NIL. Okay. Because all the power is going back to the athlete. So it's basic marketing. He with the most eyeballs wins. So that's where we created, excuse me, that's what we're created for is to get as much eyeballs on these kids as possible So that take a middle of the road um, female soccer player going to a small, a smaller college. Okay. We can still get her money because she would have been with us since she was a freshman in high school. She would be graduating high school with seven to 10,000 followers. Okay. And now she's going into a local marketplace where she has engagement from those 10,000 followers. You you don't think those local markets, those local markets, car dealerships, restaurants, all these that she's going into, you don't think they want to give her five, six, seven, ten thousand dollars to 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 speak for them on a couple a couple times through NIL. That's literally what we exist for is for everyone else. Listen, the five star athletes, they're going to get taken care of by the agents. But the agents have no interest in the masses because there's not enough money in it for them. We take care of all of that for them. We will get the eyeballs all on them and then we'll get them through the proper channels to make sure it's all done correctly with NIL. Ah, see, I think that that's, that's what I want all the athletes to hear, all the coaches, all the, all the parents, especially too. If you're not understanding, there are so many people I've talked to on the show in the last two years, specifically since NIL became a thing, like that, that they're still confused. And there's a lot of businesses out there trying to like provide services to show you how to leverage your, your name, image, and likeness, how to do it properly, all this stuff. But still people are confused. It's the wild, wild west out there. But I love the fact that if you start with just branding yourself, that's going to be the most important. You're not just going to go out into the, and, and just because you're a student athlete, just all of a sudden get deals everywhere. No, you need to have established a, a platform of some sort. And I think that's awesome what you guys are doing. That's why when I saw this, um, the way that I came across your page was because Avery Howe, local basketball player here in the Treasure Valley of Idaho, uh, she's a USC commit. Her name is Avery Howe. She plays at Boise High School. Amazing. I saw this collaboration. I was like, what in the world is this? This is amazing. And 
as soon as I saw Avery on, on your guys' post, I was like, this is, this is exactly what people need. These are what the athletes need. They need someone like yourselves to help them with that. Um, because those local markets, Brian, I've been telling people, I'm like, dude, if you're an athlete, even at a junior college, man, like you go to like Ontario, Oregon, there's money care. to be made. There's money to be made. There's yep. money to be made, man. Yep. And there, and, and you should, because for the first time in history, the athlete has the power and the athlete can openly have the power. Listen, this stuff was happening in the SEC. This stuff was happening underhand handshakes for tens of thousands of dollars. It doesn't need to happen anymore. The volleyball player, the soccer player, the golfer, you guys can now actually make money. But you're only going to make money if you have a brand that people engage with. You could be the greatest volleyball player ever. But if there's no eyeballs on you, there's no reason for them to pay you outside of the college forcing them to pay you to try to keep you happy. But you can leverage your own thing. You need you have all these eyeballs on you. You need to take advantage of it. But it isn't for us. It isn't just it, like I said, it isn't just the five star athlete. It's every single athlete, because if you have that engagement, you can then open it up to these smaller businesses. And listen, for a high school kid to be, I mean, a college kid to be getting, hey, 5,000 from this group, 2,500 from this group, 3,500 from this group, you can do that with 10, 15,000 followers because you can open up to the business and say, look at how many people look at me. And here's the even better part. You don't actually have to do it. We do all of it for you. Like, I'll tell you I'll tell you a quick story. We actually have a professional sports, a uh, professional baseball agency that's putting all of their players on our platform because one of their players is about ready to get dropped by the Jordan brand. And the reason he's about ready to get dropped by the Jordan brand is because he's got a contract that he's supposed to mention Jordan X amount of times. He loves the Jordan brand. He loves everything they have. He just doesn't want to have to post. So they approached us and they were like, can you put in, like, if, you're, if we're posting every single day correctly, if we tell you how often they need to post about Jordan brand, can you guys just put that in there? Yep. That's literally what we're created for. So now that athlete's like, great, all I have to do is wake up, see it's about Jordan today, I hit approve, boom, and it's out, and he's done. I was on the phone yesterday with a with a bank, and they're bringing on multiple of their uh, NIL guys for that very reason. And that, that's weird for people to hear banks are in NIL. No, banks are in NIL because it, it pushes all that stuff. So they're going to bring their athletes on, and they're middle-of-the-road athletes. Some are, some are studs. They got several that are like big boy studs that I'm kind of shocked they have. But most of them are just middle of the road people. And we will take care of everything that needs to be taken care of because we're already providing those daily uh, posts to them anyway. So to drip in what needs to be done compliantly is super simple for us. Oh, man, there's uh, it's, just, it's so cool to me. And as, as you're talking, I'm taking notes myself. So one of the things that just popped in my head is like engagement. One of the things that Brian and his team are doing, it's it's helping with engagement. So like you said, you don't have to have a massive following. You can be considered what they call a micro influencer. But if you only have, you know, five to 10,000 followers, if they're engaging with you, correct, that's better than having 100,000 followers on your Instagram that are all bots that don't get engaged. Yeah. With it. And you can tell, you can read right through that in a second. Like we all know how to read right through that if a, if a, if a, an account is bought. Like we know. No, yeah, go, go to the reel and see someone, oh, I've got 50,000 followers. Then why does your last reel have 1,500 views? Exactly. exactly. They're, all, they're all bots. You, you bought them. A hundred percent. And that's, it's a marketing tactic. Businesses do it and that's fine for like the image. But if you really want to leverage it, you can be a, a small micro influencer. You can leverage that. And that's what I wanted to encourage these, these athletes to understand is like, if you have a following that is actually engaged with your content, that's huge. And I can speak for myself. I'm not the biggest podcast. I don't have a big social media influence. I never cared about social media until about four years ago. So my, I only got like 4,000 followers on Instagram but I'm engaged with all those 4,000. And I can tell you from my podcast standpoint, we have over 150,000 downloads. It's not the big, it's not Joe Rogan, but I do have engaged content. So to what Brian was just saying here, if, if you guys are like working with a bank, for example, like companies want to work with me for my podcast Correct. because one, it's affordable marketing, but two, like they know that the people that are listening are actually listening engaging. to the show, yeah. right? They're engaging with it. So They'll at least have engaged listeners. They'll have a you know a thousand listeners to two thousand listeners every week that are like oh. listening to the podcast. So that's what I'm saying. It's like you can get a deal, and the banks are a, a huge one for that too because I've I've worked with them. They want that. There's so many opportunities Correct. out Correct. here. It, 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 you guys it, are it's, helping with that. With it's the now becoming some of the easiest and most efficient and uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Almost like organic way of marketing. No one watches TV anymore. No one's sitting there watching TV. And very few people will, e even if you're watching like a YouTube ad and you love this dude, the second he or she start 
pushing a product, all you do is fast forward it to the to, to this part where they're talking. Okay. But you'll scroll through stuff and you'll be able to actually see it. So it, it, it's a it's a real marketplace. So one of the other things that we can need to talk about is one of the reasons the brands love this and the parents love this. So so I don't know what your split between um, moms and dads that listen, like I don't know, I don't know what your splits are, but moms go nuts for this part. So we've got AI in there because um, the kids have the ability to actually post organically through our own app, which we encourage them to do. Okay, but if they go to post something that is off their narrative, our AI will quickly review it, and it will then give them a warning that says your post could have catastrophic uh, consequences. It's off narrative. Are you sure you want to post this? Okay, because sometimes kids are kids and their frontal lobe's not developed, and they did an emotional reaction. Some troll said something to them, so they went to fire right back at that troll, or they, they, they decided to dip their toe into politics instead of taking the Michael Jordan approach of like Democrats and Republicans both buy sneakers, so I have zero opinion on politics. That's why Jordan's never gotten into any hot. But they, 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 they went into a territory they really shouldn't because it doesn't help their brand. We're going to quickly scan and be like, are you guys sure you actually want to do this? And if they hit, yes, I do. We went one step further and we put that post in a five minute timeout inside of the app because we want their frontal lobe to catch up to, do I really truly want to do this? Because this could have catastrophic events. Then they have to come back in after that five minutes and say approve. Okay. Listen, if they're going to blow through two warnings like that, I can't stop them. Okay. But the reason brands love it, the reason universities love it, um, owners of these clubs, you, I mean, you speak about your, your, your basketball club. The reason they all love it is because it protects the kids. It protects the image. So, so this bank we're talking to, um, they are in love with it because we will put more or organic content for their athletes. And then we'll also protect their athletes from being knuckleheads and then hurting the bank because one post was about the bank. And then the next post was about something they should have never posted about. So, like I said, universities and, uh, club owners, but moms in particular and dads in particular go nuts for it. And we didn't, we didn't think it would be that big of a deal. We kind of thought it was just kind of something cool to that part. But we're actually shocked that 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 that's one of the things they go absolutely nuts for because it protects the kids. Oh, 100 percent, man. And I, I I'm not surprised why they go nuts for it at all. Like the fact that that's a, a a byproduct of the service is just huge. Like it's it's just it's it's huge. And I can't even like I I just I, I want all the athletes to know that when I'm when I coach kids, we talk about this all the time. You'll see shows on Netflix like Last Chance You. Um, Yep. That, that highlights some of these junior colleges. I had, you know, Coach J Jason Brown on my show. Uh, he was from the seasons three and four of, of Last Chance U for the football um, series. And those kids have gotten in trouble, a lot of them in the media. A lot of them, mm -hmm. their public image has been damaged. And so they're having a struggle getting out there, not only on the, the, the football side of things, but also in the workforce after football is done or whatever it might be for them. So when you can establish this and protect yourself, it's not only going to help you for the time that you're an athlete, but eventually that time will come to an end and yeah. you'll have that, that content still out there. So that it's, it's pleasant for whomever your future employer, or if you're going to be an entrepreneur and build your own thing after that, people just want to work with you because well, and it's that's, protect you from being an idiot. That's really actually our North star. And um, we created it specifically for the, so many athletes say it, it doesn't matter whether you're professional, um, like, ended in high school. Were you, were you, were you a bum athlete like me? Like your, your career ended in high school. Did you play a little college? So, so my career did end in high school. Cause there's a whole story behind that. But I, I, even if I would have played in college, I boxed for Boise state, but like that was a club sport. If I would have played in college, it would have been done after two years. I was never going D one or to a four year university. Yeah. There's not, there's not, there's not a whole lot of need for dudes. You and I are a dime a dozen. We're, we're good high, high school athletes, but we're not going there. But anyway, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what level of athlete you are. Eventually it ends. And the longer you're in athletics, the more prominent this statement is of what now, what do I do now? My entire life has been devoted to this. And I know as a sophomore in high school, you don't want to hear that, but eventually there will be life after sport. Our North star is that life after sport. So I'll walk you through really what we were truly created for. Everything else is just, um, a byproduct of what our creation was for. What we really created it for is we said, let's take again, let's take a, that female soccer player from the time she's a freshman, sophomore. Okay. She has all the high, all the eyeballs of the people in the community following her. Okay. Let's grow that to five, six, 7,000. Okay. You get into college and let's say you're a good, not an amazing, but you're still a good female soccer player. You're going to be in that community for four years. Let's capitalize on all those eyeballs and let's grow you to another 10,000. But here's where we come in. Come that junior year. 
we're going to start prompting that athlete through the app. And again, we'll, we'll take the analogy of a female soccer player. And we're going to say, hey, wh what's your plan after this? What are you doing after this? Eventually, they're going to engage and they're going to say, I, I don't really have a plan. Okay, great. Here's our career assessment test that we've created. Take this career assessment test because every year they're taking an assessment test so we can continue with their narrative. Take this. Let's say she tests out as, you know, she's actually a stud in sales because she loves competition. She loves people. She's aggressive. Great. She's a stud in sales. Perfect. And then she ends up telling us, I actually have some ties to some insurance companies. and I want to stay in the community that I was recruited to because I love it here. It's, it's Nowhere Town USA. I don't know. It doesn't matter. But she loves Nowhere Town USA. And that's where she's staying. Okay. We've got that girl. Well, her junior year, she's got over 10,000 followers. A lot of them are in the community. She is. And she's testing out as she's going to go into the insurance field. Great. Towards the end of her junior year and all the way through her senior year, we start dripping into her daily posts, not every single day, but into, weekly into her posts about business, about insurance, so that the followers can start seeing her as more than just a soccer player. And then come the time she graduates and says, hey, by the way, I'm going to join XYZ insurance agency. All of those 10,000 followers go, hey, I like her. I followed her. How about we give her a shot on our next time? The next time we need an insurance quote, why don't we see if we can get something from her? It just makes that transition into the business world that much easier. Because if you could have graduated college with 10 to 15,000 followers, bro, game over. Like it, 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 it makes it so much easier. So what these athletes aren't doing is they, because they're so hyper-focused on their sport, and I don't blame them for that, they're not taking advantage of all the eyeballs on them. Again, that's where we come in. Mom, dad, you need to hear us when we say that. That's our North Star is to take care of your kid so that when they graduate, they transition into the communities, into their career that much better. And, and they're just better individuals. That is such a vital piece to all of that. I, I have interviewed people for seven years Many athletes, we talk about the transition from one level to athletics to another level, and then the transition from when athletics ends to the next step in their life. I mean, I'm talking guys like Jerry Stackhouse, yeah. Thurl Bailey, Chris Childs, uh, Walter Bond, who was on my show. Like, there's always a transition phase. There's NFL guys like Brad Johnson. Um, these dudes and girls, they 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 have a the, the transition after sport. Regardless if that's after Brutal. high school, college, it's it's hard for a lot of them. You think that these high caliber athletes all just like transition right back to regular life? No, because it's been a big it's been a big part of their identity. And if they're not careful with that, and that's all of their identity, then they have a very big struggle acclimating to the real world, so to speak, quote unquote, right? And right. trying to figure out what their next steps are. And then some of them are very successful, Brian, and then some of them really struggle for a couple of years to figure out who they are. They they don't know what to do when the money's not flowing in the same way that it was doing before. And they, they don't know what to do with themselves when they have all the free time. So this, I, I'm just telling you guys, what Brian just said there is so true. Eventually it will end. And I hate saying that because it's sad for some of these players, but it's true. Like a lot of the club athletes that I've coached, most of them will never play college basketball. Some of them are good enough to, but some of them don't, they won't. And then those who do play, it'll probably be over after two to four years. That's just, that's the reality, you know? Correct. And so within the next six years from now, your athletic career probably will be over. And Correct. some of you guys might be the high achievers that are like the one percenters. Great. But it it's time to start thinking about the, the transition phase. So anyway, I love that whole entire piece. Now, Brian, one of the things I had written down here that I wanted to make sure we touch base on today, you mentioned locker room um, yep. when we were on our phone call. Yep. Is that something that we can discuss here as part of the absolutely. app? That, okay. Yeah, 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 locker absolutely. Room, what that function is. So, so that, so I mentioned earlier, we created two aspects of this that we just thought were cool and they, they're actually liked more than the daily post. The, the daily post people are like, that's great. I love it. But what the athletes go nuts for is the locker room. What the universities, the parents and the quote unquote adults in the room go nuts for is that, that AI protection. So the locker room, this is what athletes go nuts for. So the easiest way I can explain it is it, it, it's Reddit for athletes behind our paywall, okay? So it's a place where only the athletes get access to, okay? It's age and sports specific, okay? We provide playbooks inside of there. Um, so hypothet not hypothetically, one of the playbooks that we provide is a recruiting playbook, okay? Because you're in sports and you know this, unless you're the cream of the crop, they don't actually know how to get recruited. They don't know what to do. And I don't blame them. There's not... There's these services out there that are thousands of dollars that are kind of a gimmicky service. So we created and we brought in actual ex-college athletes, actual ex-professional athletes and said, hey, help us write these playbooks. Like, tell us the war stories, the horror stuff you went through, what you skinned your knees on. So we go in and we, we have email templates built for them. 
We have direct messages templates built for them. Okay. We have decorum in there built. Like your junior year, there's a certain amount of times you need to reach out to a university versus your senior year. There's a certain amount of time. And that, that concept, I'll tell you, that came from an ex NFL player who initially wanted to play at Colorado. And he loved the idea of going to Colorado, but he didn't find out till he was in like his third or fourth year in the NFL, where he talked to the head football coach of Colorado and said, why didn't you guys end up recruiting me? And that coach said, well, frankly, because you reached out to us so often, we thought you were recruiting us and it turned us off. So we just, we totally backed off because it was, it, it was kind of needy. It was weird. And the coach ended up admitting it was a bad decision on their part because he had an amazing college career, went on to the NFL for seven years. But so we, we have, we have those time slots built in there. Like, Hey, here's how often you need to reach out. And there's little basic things like kids don't realize, like we'll use this analogy because you and I are here locally. If a kid wants to go to Boise state, they don't just email Boise state. They email Boise state and every single university inside of the mountain West. Why? Because they need to create noise around themselves. And if they can get an offer, even if you don't want to go to San Jose state, because for whatever reason you can get in front of Boise State by getting that offer from San Jose State. So we give them all this decorum, all of these. And, and another funny thing that we kind of thought was is a lot of recruiters and coaches mentioned to us as we were kind of building this, that one of the hard parts they have is actually talking directly to the athletes because they don't really know what to, like the athletes don't know the questions to ask. So the, the, they're having to direct it. So we've given them like a list. Hey, here's some questions to consider. Here's some stuff to actually ask to get that athlete thinking on how to actually get recruited. One of the other things in the locker room we provide is a career playbook. Again, we talked about it earlier. It's life after sport. So we want to help them like, here's how you actually write a resume and, and basic things like that. Um, we also have in there like financial literacy, mental health, um, just general well-being health. We bring in like FCA, stuff like that. We bring in uh, other sports and from different levels, like we bring in college to talk to the high school. We bring in professional to talk to the college so that they can ask those questions of like, what's next? Um, one of the ones we really like a lot and the kids kind of dig it is we have a, we have one of the sections that, Hey, who knows? And what that is, is listen, if you got 75,000 athletes nationwide and you go in and say, Hey, who knows the cell phone to the head coach of Boise state, someone inside of there is going to know that. So we have that, Hey, who knows section so that they can go get the access to who they need want. Again, we want to give as much power back to the athlete. One of the other sections that we love is it's called show my social some love. So let's say a kid gets an offer from a school. He's able to go in there, say to all the athletes, hey, I just got this offer. I'm posting it on my IG here. Here's my handle. Go show me some love. Magically, we're able to take 50, 70,000 kids and go show him some love. Now, all of a sudden, that offer is showing everywhere in America. Wow, man. This is so cool. So the reason that I, I love that locker room concept that you talked about when we were on the phone call was because I cannot tell you, Brian, how many times the end of our club season, kids that are seniors will start reaching out to me. And I've reached out to college coaches. I have a couple, Colby Blaine, James Jansen, some of the local guys here that are coaching at NAIA and even junior college levels. I've got a guy over to D3 school in Oregon. I've reached out to them to get their feedback. Like, what do I need in my email? What do I need to say to these people? And I literally got their response and I'll, I'll let them know, like, here's what Colby Blaine said. And he coaches at college of Idaho. Currently, here's what James Jansen said at TVCC. These are different levels, but here's what they're telling me. Um, some of them are a little different, but you can pick and choose what you want out of there, but they need that. That's the, it, what it shows me is the athletes need that. They need to know how do I even contact these guys? Am I just saying, Hey, what's up? No, 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 no. <laughs> there is probably a formal format there that is. you need to show. Because how many emails do they get? They probably get a ton of emails, so they need to be able to like get to the facts as as quickly as possible. And dude, what a brilliant idea! Plus, community—it's power and community. If you have a community of like-minded individuals, there's some power there. So if you're an athlete and you get into this community of the locker room and and you're able to to leverage these resources, th this is why you say it's going to change the game, or it is changing the game. Yep. That is a game changer. That yep. is why this is a game changer, right? This yep. is, and that's what I love about it. Um. Talk, so we've, we've provided the value here. Like there's, there's value in this. If a listener is listening to this and they can't see that, then get off the call. But like right now you're, you're, you're showing no, the there, value. There, there's no way they don't. They're, every single mom and dad are going, okay, how, how much is this? This is like, like, because I can be mom and dad again. I don't have to be the PR. I can just be mom and dad again and let the professionals do their job. Dude. So that's to, to the point, because I'm promoting this myself as an ambassador, because I believe in the product and service. Do you mind talking about the the pay structure? Like they're going to say, okay, all right, well, how much does this actually cost though? Because that's just yeah, too good. Like, 
Absolutely. So our right now we're only we're only rolling out the base level at hundred dollars a month. So everything that we and, and there's there's some other stuff that we haven't even discussed, which is like the radar page, which is everything about the athlete exists in one. And and you mentioned Avery, she actually helped curate that one a little bit for us. Um, there, there there's other values. They're also they have the ability like uh, they have the ability to actually like design apparel and and we'll help them sell it. Like we do all of that for them. So there there is there is quite a bit of other stuff that we we haven't even done, which you don't have time to. It's okay. They can they can get on the app and they can find out all the dope stuff. But all of that's for a whopping hundred bucks a month. We intentionally made it very affordable uh, because you could go a la carte this on your own, and at the cheapest model because we've done it, it's about eight hundred fifty bucks. Okay. Oh, yeah. And it would range, that's the cheapest, cheapest way to do it. But it, it would also range well over $5,000 if you had a PR firm doing this. How do I know that? I've had employees in the financing world who literally ran all our all our stuff on online. And we paid them a ton of money and they did less, quite a bit less than what we're actually providing. So you can, you can, you can hire these people to do this on your own and they're not going to do the quantity of what we're actually doing. So we intentionally came in and went, you know what? And the analogy I use all the time is, we're hello fresh everyone knows what that meal delivery service is we're hello fresh now yes could your grandmother make a better meal than hello fresh she sure could it would take her several hours to do or we drop it off on the porch it takes a few minutes to do and it's a really dang good meal at an affordable price that's what we are could you go hire a pr firm to do it better than us sure but you're gonna pay twice the price actually you're, you're, gonna, you're gonna play 10 15 times the price you're gonna pay over five thousand dollars but with us it's a hundred bucks and it's all in your hand that that's that I'm not afraid to say it. Like I work in the entrepreneurial space. I understand business, this type of service. When you told me that it was a hundred bucks, get the frick out of here, dude. Like there, there is no way you would even come close to that now. And some people would be like, well, I can just do it on my own. Okay, great. Try that. Tell me how many <laughs> hours of time you spend per day trying to like, Correct. you know, come out with the content and then understand that like that, that two or three hours per day that you're, you're spending trying to figure this stuff out to post everything and keep to your own like narrative and do awesome. That's two to three hours out of the gym. That's two to three hours out of like, that's an opportunity cost. So this is one of those things where it's like all hands over here. They're taking care of the majority of it for a hundred bucks a month, dude. Yeah, I literally, I got it's three kids, Brian, three kids. I probably spend a hundred bucks on happy meals in a week. And I kid you not. That's probably what it is. A hundred. No, I know. And, and all these, all these parents meals. go, all these parents go weekend after weekend, thousands of dollars, thousands of dollars and all this stuff. And like our big play is to be like, great. You can just be the fan mom and dad, because, and you know, it. so many is all these kids going to all these training facilities, all this sort of stuff. The, the AAU coach, the club coach, the trainer eventually comes to mom and dad around the freshman, sophomore year and says, Hey, your kid's got a shot. Your kid can go to the next level. Your kid can get part of college paid for it. He may be a D one. He may be a Juco, but your kid can go to the next level. And the parent goes, perfect. That was, that's what all the sacrifice was for. But then they say, but you need to get them exposed. And the parent goes, I don't know how to do that. I thought, I thought, I thought just them playing for the club team wasn't going to get them exposed. No, 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 no. That was just going to get them better. You now have to get them exposed. And that's a real problem. And I guarantee you, as I said that, there was probably hundreds of parents that went, yeah, that's exactly what I, yes, that's exactly what happened. And I'm literally twitting my thumbs on like, how do I get them exposed? You get them exposed with us. Just go be mom and dad. You've put in enough sacrifice. Just go be mom and dad. And also mom and dad realize literally we're building them for life after sport. We're protecting them. We're growing them for life after sport as well. Ah, oh, dude, I absolutely love it. I, I know you wanted to touch base too. Like, so you mentioned merchandise, you mentioned some of the stuff on the radar yep. um, component. I do want to say something there. Cause that is actually a huge piece of it that, that you're building out merchandise and all this stuff. Is it all going to be inside of the app or does this, so that my question, I guess, Brian is like, I've seen other companies, not the same sphere, but just other companies that will provide like, for example, I had a company that uh, they called it um, Trophy Case, and it was like a sports digital sports card that you could. It was almost like a link in bio where they click it, mm -hmm. and it just has all their social media pages linked mm -hmm. to a sports card or something. Um, okay. Is this like a link in bio type of deal, like where they go to your athlete narrative app directly? No. Like if a coach says, "Hey, I want to see it," or does this all just it all just distributes to your personal stuff? Yeah, but all store, just, for example. correct, correct. So, so the app is for the athlete. There, there's no one getting inside that app outside of athletes. Okay, that is that is literally for the athletes. Um, that's a, it all. That all exists behind the paywall. That radar page is everything about the athlete. Um, and we'll use we'll use um, we'll use a a, a a local basketball player as an example. She was a stud. 
she was on the Adidas circuit and she mentioned that she would get like annoyed after games when these coaches and stuff would come to her and they all wanted different stuff. Like everyone was asking for, they wanted information, but they wanted different information. Yeah. She's like, it'd have been so awesome if everything about me existed in one space. And we went, okay, cool. We'll go create it. So what it is, is it's every single social media handle you have, every single article that's been written about you. If you're a, if you're a football player, your huddle link, if you're a soccer player, your jungle link, everything that would tie to you all the way down to literally what type of pregame music you listen to is on that. So if a, a recruiter says, Hey, I want to know a little bit more about you. Boop, that's what you send. There's nowhere else for the recruiter to go. Everything exists on that page for them. So think of it, think, think of it like, like a digital um, business card, but times 10. And that's, that, that's really what it is. That doesn't live behind the app. That, that's for the athlete to distribute um, so that it just makes their life that much easier. And we, again, we kind of thought that would just be something kind of cool. But even the pro athletes that we have, when we build their radar page, they go nuts for it. And we're like, what the heck? Like, like you, you're literally a stud. Why, why do you think this is so cool? They're like, it's just everything in one place. It's so awesome. So it, it's another, it's another testament that it's just, it's just a void that needs filled. Oh my gosh, dude. Literally what you guys have done is taken the problems, plural, mm-hmm. created solutions, plural, and put them into this business model, which again, goes back to what we said at the very beginning is like, you guys took your brilliant minds of all the founders, right. different strengths in different areas. And boom, here you are. Um, and it's, it's very, very affordable. Holy cow, guys. I can't even explain. There is a reason. I, I want the listeners to know, though, they do know, especially the local ones, they know that I'm not like, I, I am who I am. I'm not fake. I say what I say all the time. I believe in this product. I wouldn't have reached out to you guys. This is before, like I said, I didn't know that Brian, the guy that I saw at the gym all the time, I didn't know that Brian was the dude behind it until I went to the website after I had contacted them. And I was like, oh my gosh, dude, I know that guy. <laughs> and then, yeah, there's a whole story there too, because I'm a mutual friend of a friend of his. And it's like, dude, it's like, I, I believe in the product. I already saw it. And I was like, this is a cool idea. Then I heard about it. I believe in it even more. So I'm going to be promoting this as an ambassador. I'm going to have a link here in the description. If you guys want to learn more, reach out to me. I can always reach out to Brian and see if there's any questions that you guys have on it. I really just want to help you guys leverage this resource that Brian and his team have put together because man, if I had this when I was an athlete, I always say that, Oh, if I was had this when I was younger, like I'm like my dad, if this existed when I was younger, you're, yeah, an, but if you're, I did, you're, an, you're an old guy now. You're an old guy. I now. know, man. Mid thirties, baby. Like <laughs> my knees are creaking, everything's hurting. But listen, our goal now is to share it with the the younger generation so that we can help with that. So that's what I want to do. If you guys have questions, please let us know. Brian, what is the biggest life lesson that sports have taught you? Whether it's from a business perspective or even as a former athlete yourself, I ask this question to every one of my guests, and I want to know from your perspective. So, and it, it, this is something I preach to my kids. Um, this is something I, I, I preach when I had a whole bunch of employees in a different world. Um, and, and, and to the employees that we have now, it's the same thing. Consistency wins above everything else. Consistency will trump everything. And it's just that showing up every single day, putting in the work. It doesn't matter. Uh, you, you've seen me at the gym. It doesn't matter if it's freezing outside on a Saturday, it's 6am it's gym time. It's time to go. And it's the same thing in business. It's the same thing in sports. It's the same thing in your marriage. It's the same thing with your friendships. Consistency will trump everything inconsistency is poison. It will destroy everything it touches. Ooh, I can speak to that just so you guys know not to be a weirdo, but like Brian's freaking yoked. So if you guys, you want to see a guy who's been consistent in the gym specifically, it's like, Oh, Brian's here. Brian's just, here. Uh, uh, <laughs> just, no, no, just don't make go. it seem like that. I'm quiet. I don't even talk. I don't talk to anyone. Yeah. I, I, I stick to myself. I'm, I'm, I'm the, I'm the guy in the corner doing all the lifts that people don't want to live. Don't want to do, but no, it, it, for me, it's all, it's all consistency in every aspect of your life. And that's, that's one of the things we fulfill with athlete narrative is, and you know, that being in the social media influencer space, you have to be consistent. And that's the hardest part with social media is the consistency. We take care of it for you. So moms, dads, I would highly, highly encourage you click his link. Um, you, you love his podcast and, and I'll drop a, I'll drop a surprise on you. All right. So like Brian was saying, we'll have a link here. Um, and we'll be able to get you guys 10% off on uh, your monthly payment for this this app and service. So make sure to click the link in there. We'll get you more information. Like I said, if you have questions for it, ask me. I can get a hold of Brian or you can reach out to them on their website as well. And uh, we'll get you guys all squared away. I'll get the social media pages here too. So you guys can follow Athlete Narrative on on uh, their social media pages. Just so you guys can see what they're doing. Um, I, I really believe in this product. So I appreciate you, Brian, for being willing to join us today. I appreciate yeah. the, the time and just being willing to, to share everything about it. And uh, 
yeah, for the listeners out there, if you're new, whatever, just make sure you hit that subscribe button because we'll be coming to you next week with another interview. Take care. Guys, thanks so much for listening to another episode of my show. Now, if you could go and do me a favor, head over to iTunes, give me five stars and leave me a review. It would be greatly appreciated. Thanks, guys. Appreciate your support.